Good morning, children. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Academia Ambala. Today, we'll continue the chapter Nationalism in India, Part Two. As we have seen in the first part, that Gandhi ji has decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement because it was turning violent in many places. So he thought of now Satyagrahis needed to be properly trained before they would be ready for any mass struggle. So now towards the civil disobedience movement, the formation of Swaraj Party. Many political leaders suggested the idea of fighting the Britishers from within the Legislative Council. C. R. Das and Motilal Nehru. formed swaraj party in 1922 leaders like jawaharlal nehru and subhash chandra bose pressed for a, for a more radical agitation now reasons for civil disobedience movement simon commission and then a great economic depression simon commission the indian members of the central legislative assembly exposed some drawbacks in the government of india act of 1919 so as a result of the it the simon commission was appointed in 1927 to suggest any further reforms this commission consisted of seven members and its chairman was sir john simon indians boycotted it as there was no there were no indian members in it moreover there was no indication of swaraj which was the first priority of indians when this commission arrived in, in 1928 it was met with demonstrations with banners written on that simon go back after this great depression in 1929 it started the depression had a deep impact on the agricultural as well as industrial goods poverty increased by 1930 due to the high taxes now this civil disobedience movement it means that actively people are going to participate in this they were ready to refuse to obey certain laws demands and commands of a government or of an occupying inter international power civil disobedience is a symbolic or ritualistic violation of the law rather than a rejection of the system as a whole for this gandhi ji thought of starting a a march which came to be known as a salt march now mahatma gandhi believed that salt could be a powerful symbol to unite the whole nation most of the people including the british they scoffed at the idea abolition of the salt tax was among many demands which were raised by gandhi ji through a letter to viceroy irben the salt march or dandi march was started by gandhi ji on 12th march 1930 He was accompanied by 78 volunteers. They walked for 24 days to cover a distance of 240 miles from Savarmati to Dandi. Many more joined them in the way. On 6th April 1930, Gandhi ji ceremonially violated the law by taking a fistful of salt. The salt march marked the beginning of the CDM, means civil disobedience movement thousands of people they broke the salt law in different parts of country people demonstrated in front of government salt factories foreign clothes were boycotted peasants refused to pay revenue village officials resigned and tribal people they violated forest law now response of britishers towards this salt march the colonial government began to arrest the congress leaders this led to violent clashes in many places mahatma gandhi was arrested about a month later 
people began to attack the symbols of british rule such as police posts municipal buildings law courts and railway stations even women and children were beaten up about 1 lakh people were arrested the round table conference when things began to take a violent turn mahatma gandhi called off the movement he signed a pact with irwin on 5th march 1931 this was called the gandhi irwin pact now according to this pact gandhi ji agreed to participate in the round table conference in london in lieu of that the government agreed to release the political prisoners gandhi ji went to london in december 1931 the negotiations broke down and gandhi ji had to return with disappointment when gandhi ji came back to india he found that most of the leaders they were put in a jail congress had been declared illegal <clears throat> many measures were taken to prevent meetings demonstrations and boycotts mahatma gandhi relaunched the civil disobedience movement by 1934 the movement had lost its momentum now people's perception of the movement how they reacted or how they took this movement civil disobedience movement farmers for the farmers the fight for swaraj was a struggle against high revenues when the movement was called off in 1931 without the revenue rates being revised the farmers were highly disappointed many of them refused to participate when the movement was relaunched in 1932 businessman the indian industrial and commercial congress was formed in 1920 and the federation of the indian chamber of commerce and industries was formed in 1927 these were the results of attempts to bring the common business interest on a common platform for the businessmen swaraj meant an end to oppressive colonial policies they wanted an environment which could allow the business to flourish they were apprehensive of militant activities and of growing influence of the socialism among the younger members of the congress now how industrial workers look at this movement the industrial workers showed lukewarm response to the civil disobedience movement since industrialists they were closer to the congress workers kept a distance from the movement but some workers selectively participated in the movement congress did not want to alienate the industrialist and hence preferred to keep the workers demands at bay this was a moment where women also participated at a very large scale <clears throat> women also participated in the cdm movement however most of the women were from high caste families in the urban areas and from rich peasant households in the rural areas but for a long time the congress was reluctant to give any position of authority to women within the organization the congress was just keen on the symbolic presence of women there were limits of civil disobedience movement participation of dalits was very limited many dalit leaders they wanted a different political solution to the problems of the dalit community they demanded reserve seats in educational institutions and separate electorate for dalits dalits participation in the cdm was limited dr b r ambedkar organized the dalits into a depressed classes association in 1930 he clashed with mahatma gandhi during the second round table conference on the issue of separate electorate for dalits now how muslims participated or why muslims participation was very lukewarm 
After the decline of the non-cooperation Khilafat movement, a large section of Muslims, they became alienated from the Congress. From the mid-1920s, the Congress was more visibly associated with the Hindu religious nationalist groups. Muhammad Ali Jinnah was an important leader of the Muslim League. He was willing to give up the demand for separate electorate, but he wanted reserved seats for Muslims in the Central Assembly. Now, the, it was felt that this is the time to have some iconic symbols by which we Indians can unite together, where we have a feeling of collective belongingness. So, the sense of collective belongingness starts with a people begin to believe that they are all part of the same nation when they discover some unity that binds them together. The united struggles for independence helped in building the sense of collective belonging. Additionally, a variety of cultural processes also captured the spirit of nationalism. The nation was depicted in images. The identity of the nation is most often symbolized in a figure or image with which people can identify the nation. The image of Bharat Mata was the pictorial representation of the motherland. Vande Mataram, the national song was written by Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay in 1870s. This was sung during the Swadeshi movement in Bengal. Different artists, they projected their own version of Bharat Mata and Bharat Mata was shown as a very calm and composed figure. And every leader was ready to let down his life for uh, protecting the motherland, for its nation. Folklore that and folklore, uh, folk songs were made. Many nationalist leaders took help of folk tales to spread the idea of nationalism. It was believed that the folk tales revealed the true picture of traditional culture. National flag. Now the national flag which we see today has evolved through various stages. A tricolor, red, green and yellow was used during the Swadeshi movement. There were eight lotuses on it which depicted the eight provinces of British India. There was a crescent moon on the flag which represented Hindus and Muslims. Gandhiji had designed the Swaraj flag by 1921. It was also a tricolor but the colors were red, green and white and there was a spinning wheel in the center. Now, reinterpretation of history. Many Indians felt that the British had given different interpretation of the Indian history. They felt that it was important to interpret the history from an Indian perspective. They wanted to glorify the rich past of India so that the Indians could, could feel proud of their history. So, this way our nationalism in India comes to an end. Thank you.